Hello fellas, last time we added quite a lot of details in the cockpit. Now it is time to turn our attention to the bomb bay and the gunner's compartment. There is quite a lot of ground to cover, so let's crack on. The biggest issue here is that there is nothing in the wing root area. And it is going to be quite visible with the bomb bay doors being open. So let's fix that. Using masking tape I'm going to take the shape from the kit and then transfer it to a sheet plastic. And by the way this plastic came from some container. Food or cosmetics I don't remember, just some packaging material. After the shape was cut out I glued it in place using Mr. Cement SP. And this process repeated itself until all sections were done. And I did this in sections because I had to leave space for the bulkheads. Before I do anything else I'm going to transfer the stringer lines on the plastic. This will come handy in just a few moments. Now let's do the ribs. Again I'm using plastic from a container of some sort. If that's not recycling I don't know what is. Anyhow. After some trimming and Mr. Cement SP application the ribs are all done. Now we can add stringer sections as I told you earlier. The pencil lines will do an awesome job being guidelines. Here we will have to be careful to cut the pieces so they fit as tight as possible between the ribs. And also to align all the pieces properly. So here is how it looks after all the work. I'm sure that taking the extra step of filling and sanding the seam lines would have been beneficial, but since I don't want to spend a decade on this model I will skip this step. Hopefully this will not be that obvious. Now let's add some control cables. On the port side I used fishing line. It reacts very well to CA glue and the bond is excellent. Using CA kicker as usual helps a lot. I painted the fishing line with black marker only so that you can better see what is going on, otherwise it is not necessary. On the starboard side I made the control cables from thin copper wire as an experiment to see which material is better. And the fishing line turned out to be much much better choice. The copper wire is just too easy to kink, bend or otherwise damage. Another thing that we have to do in this area is a wire loom that comes from the cockpit, makes a few turns and presumably ends up somewhere in the gunner's compartment or even further back into the tail. So I made a very long piece of twisted wire and glued it in place, interrupting it where the bulkhead meets the fuselage. After a few masking tape retaining clamps we can call the bomb bay walls pretty much done. I am not going to glue the bomb racks yet as I want to be able to paint everything that is going to be behind them. Believe it or not there are a few pieces of kit parts that we need to glue on before the rampage continues. For the gunner compartment we have a nice set of panels, one on each side wall. They give a pretty cool depth sensation by exposing the structure through their openings. Also at this point I am going to glue the rear bulk head on the port side fuselage half for a couple of reasons. One, I can better incorporate the details we are going to put later and two, this bulk head will make the dry fit assembly of the fuselage that much easier. Next we have the pilot sidewall which I forgot to show you in the previous episode. So here it is. One interesting feature of this kit are the gear bay doors which are molded together with the sidewalls. I get the point that installing these doors can be extremely frustrating task right at the end of the build in most other cases. But I also have some concerns about how long this will survive before I knock them off. Anyways, this is an interesting design feature. The Bombay face of the cockpit bulkhead does not look very good with these indentations. So I applied the same technique as with the missing wing root area details. 
Copy the shape of the masking tape and transfer it on plastic sheet. Next, I glued the new plastic detail to the bow head using Mr. Samen Deluxe to give me some initial bond. And then when everything was aligned, I applied some Mr. Samen SP to fix the thing in place a bit faster. Next came a couple of small details from a round rod. And now it is time to start the plumbing extravaganza. This time the copper wire was kindly donated by an inductor as it has a bit larger diameter. As usual, CA glue and some accelerator should do the bonding job. Alongside with the plumbing there are some valves or pressure regulators or whatever these things are. So naturally they had to be replicated to some extent. For the smaller ones I used stretch sprue and for the larger I used 2mm round rod sections. For such work, having a good reference image is crucial. And the more you get to understand the inner workings of the subject, the more details you can add. Which is a rabbit hole I fall for way too often, getting my builds to unravel painstakingly slow. We are almost done in this area now. It looks nice and busy and should look even better once we do all the painting and the weathering. The bulkhead that lives in the middle of the bomb bay is in dire need of some chain drilling, because some areas which are supposed to be openings are molded shut. After the aforementioned chain drilling I connected the dots using a curved chisel, and then I proceeded to the extremely amusing cleanup and sanding process. In all seriousness though, this upgrade made the bulkhead look so much better. Inside the openings we just did, we can see some plumbing going inside the bulkhead. So on one side I used stretch sprue to recreate that and on the other I used soldering wire due to the bends in the pipes visible on the reference images. Probably I should have used the same material on both sides. To ensure the continuity of the plot I inserted a small section of soldering wire in the round opening in the middle of the bulkhead. In this area we can see something that looks like an electrical motor connected to what I assume are relays. In the bottom section of the motor runs a rod connecting the two fuselage sides. I suspect this motor is assigned with the task of opening and closing the bomb bay doors, either by itself or in conjunction with some other device. To finish off this area I added the mandatory twisted copper strands wire loom wannabe thing. And to enrich the situation I added thin strips of masking tape to simulate the cable ties. After all I doubt this wire loom was glued on right? As previously mentioned the gunner's compartment side walls get pretty respectable detail from the get go. But such is the nature of this build that we cannot leave it alone. So first we install a few wire looms running from a box on the port side towards the rear bulkhead. While two of the looms are going on the higher side near the canopy, the third is going to snake behind the side wall, again providing a nice depth into the picture. Since I don't want the control cables to end so abruptly at the bulkheads, I made some covers from thin metal sheet. These covers should give the impression that the control cables go through the bulkheads and not just end there. And while we are on the subject, I did continue the control cables in the gunner's compartment. Now we have much more compelling picture. After a couple of very short wire looms going in the front bulkhead, let's turn our attention to the rear bulkhead. It is also quite crowded place. Again, we have a myriad of pipes, hoses and wire looms. For a change, we are going to install one of those corrugated hoses. If you want to see a quick tutorial on how to make such detail, let me know with a comment in the comment section of this video. The starboard wall will need some attention too. Just a couple of things. You may be questioning my reasonability right now. 
Why putting so much effort in a space that's gonna be barely visible? But I can say that the canopy of this compartment is quite large and should provide with decent amounts of light and viewing angles. Also, we have a window on the starboard wall. On top of that, we are going to create an opening in the front bulkhead. I don't know if this is an access hatch or emergency exit of sorts, but it is pretty large and should deliver plenty of light and observation possibilities. Unfortunately, I could not determine what kind of closure this opening should have. I have seen some vinyl looking curtain thing that gets zipped around and even a clear acrylic sheet. So I decided to use the Creative Freedom card and made a simple hatch hinged above the opening. Apart from the armament that will have its own episode, the detailing of the bomb bay and the gunner compartment is complete. Meaning that I am done with it. More can be done for sure, but I think it is enough. If you think the same, tickle the like button until it turns blue and ring the notification bell because in the next update we are going to have fun painting and weathering the interior. Thank you for watching and until then, happy modeling fellas!